first off, before you watch this, if you want, you can go back and see my original review. I did a collaboration with a bunch of other really good YouTubers who you should definitely check out, who are probably better than me, but that's beside the point. Anyway, go and watch that one first. Anyway, these... Why do I keep saying anyway? Anyway! Right, sorry. Focus. Hello YouTube and people of the interwebs. I am not happy with this little fluff of hair that I just... Right, hang on. I've been expecting you. Right. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but... We're back! Yeah, and I'm in the same jumper as the past two videos, but that's because I'm recording them all back to back. I don't just wear the same clothes every day. I promise. Anyway, today I am here to review the latest, although it's been... Phew, gotta be about half a year, six months now, since Series 11 aired. But yeah, today I am re-reviewing, so I'm reviewing again. Focus! Okay, so we'll start with episode one. I really apologise for being so hyper. Episode one, I've got it on my computer screen, so if I look there, that's why. The woman who fell to earth. Now, upon first viewing, it was... Yeah, just near. And on second viewing, it's above. Yeah, it's a really quite... See... What I'm doing now with Series 11, I've gone back and I'll put a tweet that I wrote recently on screen, but I'm going back and watching it without any expectation and without the, like, hope of, oh, the Daleks and the Master and Cybermen and the Santarans are in Episode 2. I'm going without that and watching it like I watch Classic Who with a sort of different frame of mind, because to me, New Who, Classic Who and... I'm going to call this New New Who, like New New Earth, A, hey. But New New Who is different to New Who. New Who is Russell T Davies and Stephen Moffat. New New Who is Chris Chibnall. Classic Who is Classic Doctor Who. Anyway, I will stop rambling and actually cut to the point. Episode 1, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Yeah, it's decent, good. I love that YouTube and things are set up through... I love that Ryan sets up his YouTube thing with Grace and this is the most wonderful woman I ever met, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, I really like that that's the twist. So the woman who fell to earth, although we think it's, oh, it's the doctor, she fell through the train, which makes no sense, don't get me started. But no, it's actually Grace. And I've got to say, genuinely, while I was watching this, I was watching it with a group of friends, I was sat there going, please don't kill Grace off at any point in this series. She's my favourite character so far. Literally, by the end of the episode, she's dead. So I think Chris Chibnall did a very good job at writing Grace for us to feel emotionally invested when she does actually die. So, well done. Anyway, episode two. <sighs> like every episode two from pretty much every Doctor Who series, apart from series ten, because series ten is like, God, it is perfect. Well, not quite, but close. Smile's brilliant. Beside the point. The Ghost Monument, bland, forgettable. I watched it the other day and I can barely remember it. With highlights, well not highlights, just things that I remember, are that thug guy with his accent like this, who was complaining about his mum pushing him out of a tree or something. It was quite dull, but the new TARDIS is like that scene where it comes back and all the companions go in and the custard cream. I think that's quite nice. I don't, I'm not particularly a fan of the design of the TARDIS, but I'd say it's still good. Anyway, episode three, Rosa. Now, this is one of my favourite all-time episodes of Doctor Who ever. I've said this from the first time I've seen it and to now. And one thing which I see people complain about all the time is, oh, well, no, because the villain's really bad. The villain's a racist and he doesn't have a reason to be racist. To me, that makes no sense. Surely that's the point. Racism is stupid. It's illogical. There's no reason to be a racist. No one has a backstory for being racist. It's just ignorance. It is stupidity when someone is a racist. And that's exactly what the character of Crasco is. He's just blinded and stupid by racism. There's no reason. If anything, if he had a reason to be racist, it would demean the whole fact of, like, the whole point of the episode. 
So overall, I would say Rosa is the only, one of the only 10 out of 10 stories I would give to Doctor Who. It's absolutely brilliant. Really strong message, strong acting, and in this episode, I actually love the team, gang, fam. Yeah, I think they're really good, and yeah, Mallory Blackman, who wrote the episode, coincidentally, is also an author I used to read as a child, and it was wonderful. I absolutely adore the episode, Rosa. Now, on to episode four. Arachnids in the UK. Now, upon first viewing, I really didn't like it. And now, I don't mind it. It's sort of an episode where you can just sit there and watch it and, yeah, let it happen. But the ending of it, and the spiders, and Stormzy, and what about all the other spiders in the city? Do they stay? Do they die? What? Surely it's more humane to shoot the spider than to lock them in a room and let them slowly die. The ending is utter, utter rubbish. But the first 40 minutes, I'd say, are pretty good. They're all right. Just the ending is horrendous, so Chibnall, or whoever wrote that, sort yourself out! Now, episode 5, The Saranga Conundrum. Controversial opinion warning. I actually quite like it. I mean, yeah, it's not the best episode at all. It's not the worst episode at all. It's just an alright fun adventure. And people who have like, oh, well, there's a pregnant man and it's stupid. They're aliens, it's fun, it's like enjoyable, they're invested, like you can invest yourselves in the characters, which is one thing Chibnall does very well, and people like also with the music, everyone seems to love it. I don't mind it, it's, to me, it's like if New Who and Classic Who, you smashed their musics together, and then you get Sega Nakanola's score, and yeah, I think it's decent. The Pating itself... I actually think it's a really good concept and quite interesting idea. It's not like it's evil. It's just sort of, as the Twelfth Doctor said in World Enough and Time, it's like your bacon sandwich to you, to the bacon sandwich. You're the evil one. You're eating it. It's that sort of thing. The Pating's not there to just kill everyone. It just wants to eat. It wants energy. And I think that's a really nice idea. And they wrap it up quite cleverly. And I like that they have a weird alien prayer as well, like religion and everything. Why not have aliens have other random weird religions. I think it's clever. Episode 6, I think we're now on. Demons of the Punjab. Yeah, it's alright. I think the message of it is quite impactful and good, and I'm glad that it, like, brings to light a piece of history that's never normally talked about in the partition of India. I think it's important that people learn about it, and I think it's good, but... Some of the bit, some of the episode doesn't keep my attention. I do like the twist of the oh, I've forgotten the names. The whatever they are, the demons. I th I love that they're actually good and they're just helping people when they die. And also, side note, I hope that when Jodie Whittaker regenerates, they are watching over her and like the Ood for ten, that sort of thing. Anyway, episode seven, Kablam! First five minutes, absolutely love. Like genuinely, I don't know why. It's just like with. A few episodes, I just love the first five minutes. And when she gets the fez and all that, it's brilliant. Rest of the episode, yeah, it's all right. It's not brilliant. It's just, you know, all right. Episode eight now, The Witch Finders. And yeah, I've watched this quite a few times because <laughs> I tried to convince myself that watching that is revision for GCSE Crime and Punishment, which I guess it is because witchcraft's a big part of English Crime and Punishment. But, yeah, so overall, The Witchfinders, yeah, it's all right. King James is, for me, his first scene makes me want to punch a wall. Just what is he doing? He's, He's like, like this. this. Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. Why? It's like, I get it. It's historically accurate that he's a bit camp and over the top. But I felt like I was watching Doctor Who the pantomime. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Next episode, It Takes You Away. Yeah, it's... I originally thought this was one of the best of the series. On rewatch, it's still a good episode. It's just not as good as I initially thought, which is surprising because everything else has got better than I thought. It Takes You Away is just... It's all right. The twist with the frog is a bit weird. It's not horrendous. I mean, this show is about a group of people and a main man slash woman who changes their face and travels in a blue box. 
So, like, I think you can cope with a frog in a room with the voice of Grace. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but oh well. Then we are on to the finale, the Battle of Ranscor Av Kolos. Nah, Tim Shaw is a good villain, I'll give you that, but he's not finale worthy at all. And also, can I just point out, it's literally just taking elements of every other finale and like slamming them into one. It takes the stolen earth and journey's end, we're stealing planets to make a weapon, ah, sort of thing, takes that. And Tim Shaw is Darth Vader. Like, he's literally Darth Vader in this episode. But overall, it's a good episode, and if it wasn't a finale, I would rank it higher than I do. It's just the fact that it's a finale, and it's not worthy of a... <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, to me, it's not worthy of, of being a finale. It's alright. It's just meh. Now, if you can count it as Series 11, Resolution. What do I think of Resolution? Yeah. I actually really, really like it. Controversial opinion again, it might be my favourite Dalek story ever. Yeah, it actually has really threatening Daleks and all that. Well, one Dalek. The one problem with it is the Dalek should have called the rest of the Dalek fleet and had all that, and that would have been brilliant. But on its own, it's still decent, and yeah. There was another interesting comment that was made on my comment on Twitter about, let it, I'll put it on screen, about letting yourself, um, letting the writer tell the story, not yourself tell the story. And I think that's a really good and interesting point, which I will bear in mind going forward. Because after watching series 10 of Doctor Who, Peter Capaldi's like swan song, to me, it's the best series of all time, can't be beaten. I went into series 11 thinking, Chibnall, you've got to do better. You're going to bring series 10 and you're gonna have Sontarans and all of these and he went for fresh no monsters apart from a Dalek and yeah but I am glad that series 12 we know now has the Jadoon in I think that'll be a nice welcome addition anyway those are my opinions on series 11 yeah 11 one last thing before I go the TARDIS team I actually really really like them I didn't the first time round, but now I'm really starting to like I like them everyone says Yaz is a bit pointless but then I really like the companion of Adric, so sorry guys, but I like them. They're really good. And yeah, anyway, that's it for this review. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. You know what you're doing, and goodbye!